evening and thanks for joining us for another edition of Good Question. My name is Travis Kaufman from News Talk K57. My show on the radio is The Big Show. It's a talk show and uh, we talk about, well, issues here on Guam each and every afternoon from 2 to 6. But not everybody listens to the radio. You're watching TV right now and there are some things you should probably know about. So we take some of the issues to television. We welcome you to the program, the big story, hey, it's the hay study. Um, it's like people getting raises, who's getting raises? Wasn't this talked about years ago? It was, in fact, but uh, there are some things that you should know about it. And Valentine's Day, a bunch of people could be getting raises. How much? We'll talk about that tonight with Shane Nata. He's with us here in the studio. He uh, works with the Department of Administration. People say Shane Nata is a knowledgeable guy about personnel type stuff. What's your official title, Shane? Uh, personnel Services Administrator. Oh, okay. So you're the guy involved with uh, working out merit bonuses, things like that? Correct. Okay. And also the Hayes study. Yes. Okay. So we've got a few questions about it. You think you can field them tonight? Definitely. Fantastic. Okay, so that's what we'll be doing tonight on Good Question. We'll be talking with Shane Nata about the ins and outs of the Hay Study. Stay with us. Fox 6 takes Guam's number one rated news and talk radio station, News Talk K57, to TV. Watch Fox 6 every weekday as our PNC cameras feature the live in-studio environment of The Breakfast Show with Ray Gibson, Patty Arroyo on the radio, and The Big Show with Travis Coughlin on News Talk K57. Enjoy an entertaining televised look at Guam's most popular talk shows. Tune in to Fox 6 every Monday through Friday from 6 to noon and then again from 4 to 6 to see what's on the radio. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us tonight on Good Question. My name is Travis Kaufman from News Talk K57. I'll be your host. Our guest tonight is Shane Nata, and he is here to talk about, well, the thing that is the big story this week, uh, next week, and probably until and if it's implemented. It is the Hay Study. What's the Hay Study? The uh, Hay Study was basically, uh, well, it actually originated in 2010. It gets its name from the company of, uh, which helped us and was our consultant when doing a study government-wide of all the salaries and uh, classifications of all positions. So uh, that's where the name was coined. Uh, its official title in the law is actually the Government of Guam Competitive Wage Act of 2014, but that's a lot to swallow. Right. So it's been coined the Hay Study. I thought it was called Obamacare at first. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> You know, here's the thing about the Hay Study. I've been hearing about it for years as a talk show host, and every time I heard about it, people would say, listen, it's been more than 20 years since, w this was back in 2010, uh, it's been more than 20 years since the compensation across the board package for Government of Guam employees had been looked at. And so they wanted to look at the kinds of uh, positions that are held by government employees and how they would compare, I guess, to other governments, other places, is that how it works? Yeah, uh, basically we, we took a slice of um, uh, national averages uh, across the mainland just to look at a, a lot of jobs. You know, we benchmark certain positions like law enforcement, like nurses, and then your accountants, your analysts, those kinds of things. Uh, we look at their averages and, you know, we put together our own structure to try and see how we can, uh, you know, pay our employees relative to what they're getting paid. Uh, not just that, we also looked at districts that were more similar to us, you know, you're looking at districts uh, not like California, not like uh, uh, Texas or New York, uh, places like that, just to make sure that it stays relevant to, to our area. And we took a look at our local market. Um, you know, we tapped a lot of resources here at the federal government. So we tried to make it as comprehensive as we could. Oh, okay. Now, uh, so you worked for Department of Administration when the Hay Group was conducting this study? Yes, uh, I was part of the team uh, oh, okay. that was tasked to work with the consultant. Oh, very cool. Okay, I read about that uh, back in 2010. And so they looked at not just salaries, but like how people get increases. They, like uh, if you're a government employee and you have a job, there's like uh, 22 step increases or something like that? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, uh, that's correct. Uh, we looked at our, our current plan, which, which was uh, antiquated basically. It was done in 91, so it was at least 20 years old. 
Um, and we took into relevant factors. Uh, the job market itself, uh, employment, uh, wasn't exactly on a boom. Mm -hmm. So 2010, the environment looked different than it does now, uh, both locally and nationally. So uh, we took all of those factors into consideration, kind of reassessed, mm -hmm. using 2010 as the basis and trying to formulate something uh, new um, and would be easier to transition for employees. Oh, okay. So, well, I was looking at uh, sort of the history of the attempts to implement the Hay study, and from what I follow, in December of 2010, one of the last official acts of Governor Felix Camacho, he went and said, okay, let's just go ahead and implement this Hay study, and about $5 million went out uh, to 3,700-some employees. Is that right? Mm, that's, that's right. And, okay, so I, then the first official act of Governor Eddie Calvo was to say, um, I, we need to put the brakes on this Hay study. It, mm -hmm. it seems to me we're hundreds of million dollars uh, in debt. Mm -hmm. And until we can get a look at whether we can afford this thing or not, we need to put the brakes on it. Yes? Yes, that's correct. Okay, so that's what he did. He sent a letter to Doris Flores Burks and said, uh, could you take a look at like all of our liabilities, the ones that are budgeted, the ones that are not budgeted, and came up with a huge uh, cumulative deficit of 380, no, maybe 350 million dollars? Around there, yeah. Yeah, 349 million dollars. Okay, so at that point, it was looking like uh, the Hay study is not going to be implemented for a while. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then a bunch of things uh, changed between that time and the present time. Can we afford the Hay study now? Could we have afforded the original Hay study, which <clears throat> this is not, by the way? Uh, the original in 2010, uh, from my understanding, and, and back then, the role that um, uh, our office in particular, the HR office, played in the fiscal decisions uh, wasn't the same as it is now. Oh, really? What is, uh, how is it different now? Uh, now the HR office is part of the actual fiscal team, whereas really? before we were separated. Is um, usually just the financial people that handled everything. Oh. Uh, so this administration added our office as part of the fiscal team to ensure that uh, any personnel decisions that are made are in line with overall fiscal policy. So the answer I'd give to the question is basically, um, uh, it has the f uh, fiscal team has been able to um, stabilize the situation in order to implement the hay increases. Okay, so uh, a very different situation. You know, as as we all know, we've got uh, tax refunds. Uh, the governor loves to talk about uh, working uh, on a cash kind of uh, bottom line rather than mm -hmm. uh, using other numbers. Uh, merit bonuses have been implemented. We have a whole host of things have happened since then. Now he says he's ready to implement uh, the Hay study, but it's not just the recommendations of the initial Hay study. It's like the Hay study plus. It wasn't the original. First of all, it was just unclassified, or I mean, sorry, just classified employees, right? Mm -hmm, correct. Uh, yeah, it's, it's actually uh, a lot of the main parts that we changed. Uh, you're correct. We uh, did recommend that unclassified employees get included. Uh, and, you know, a lot of the focus, which happened in 2010, weren't just the appointed officials. Um, there are a lot of unclassified employees that serve functions within agencies. Uh, they were left out of the bunch. We wanted to make sure that operations weren't impacted by not including them. Uh, that's why we recommended including unclassified as well. Um, and a lot of other things have changed. We took into consideration feedback that we received from different sources, employees, uh, general public, uh, mm -hmm. you know, and other policymakers, and tried to uh, change the plan so it, it could be easily implemented without uh, causing too much of a ripple. Okay. Uh, yeah. now, now, to implement this thing uh, across the board, how much is it going to cost per year? Uh, approximately, uh, the figures that are out right now, 20 million was what was put out. So we're looking at around that much. Uh, it seems to me when I was looking at the, the older study, it was about $10 million a year. And this one's going to cost 20? Correct. Uh, what had happened in the old study was uh, the initial figures that came out, they appropriated 13 million. Uh -huh. uh, the administration at the time came back with a bill later to ask for an additional 5 million. So um, there were uh, additional and supplemental appropriations they needed to fully implement. So taking all that into consideration, it's still around the same neighborhood of 20 million. We are here talking with uh, Shane Nata. He is from the Department of Administration, and among other things, he's uh, been uh, very knowledgeable about the Hay study, in fact, worked with the original Hay team, and uh, these days works with the uh, fiscal team as well, the fiscal policy team, and uh, is uh, talking to us about uh, how and uh, what is going to be implemented. Um, people are watching right now going, 
When is he going to get to when do I get a raise? Uh, when, when will people get a raise? Uh, the law says that it goes into effect February 14th, uh, which is 30 days after January 15th, which is when we were supposed to submit it. Uh, so that's when we're looking at uh, it going into effect, whether or not it's been approved or amended. If the, the legislature doesn't touch it, then it goes into effect as is. They could approve it beforehand. Now, uh, as far as uh, it's a partial implementation from what I understand, mm -hmm. uh, how much will people get of what is recommended? Uh, the partial implementation actually only goes toward one of the pay plans, uh, which is the general pay plan. Covers all those positions that aren't nurses, aren't law enforcement, public safety. Uh, you're looking at approximately half of what um, you would have received from full implementation. And that was just done because that pay plan was the only one that never had any increase for 20 years. So of course the impact is larger. And to ensure that uh, we can do it properly and sustain it, it's being phased in. Okay, now does this at all affect autonomous agencies, GWA, GPA? Um, for those specific agencies, uh, not as much. Uh, it will affect uh, agencies like the hospital, and it will affect the uh, DOE. But those agencies uh, have their own pay plans, and it may affect a few employees, but not, not a huge impact. Okay, uh, I'm a selfish guy as an employee. Uh, I'm thinking about me and how much I'm going to get paid. Uh, if I'm an employee, how do I find out what the Hay study is recommended for me? Uh, well, what's been issued and uh, what we're, what's on the legislature's website and we're working to put on our website is the, the plan that was admitted. Uh, it does contain schedules of salaries and positions that are covered. Uh, once it's approved um, in whatever form it is, that's when we'll really get down to the nitty gritty of, uh, you know, what does it mean for, uh, you know, an individual employee? And at that point, we'd be able to tell everyone, this is what you're going to get, and this is how it's uh, looking going forward. Okay. And uh, even if you're not recommended for a raise, I suppose there are some categories there. Mm -hmm. uh, no one's going to, like, lose money, are they? Definitely not. Definitely not. Uh, the caveat that we had in 2010, which we maintain now, is uh, no one loses money. Uh, that was also consistent with uh, 91 when we okay. did it the first time. Good. Shane Nace is with us uh, from the Department of Administration. We're talking about the ins and outs of the Hayes study. Uh, when we come back, Shane, I want to talk to you about a couple of concerns raised by senators. Uh, shucks, they get a nice raise. Mm -hmm. uh, as recommended by the study, mm -hmm. $20,000. What do you thought? They're making sixty-five. dollars mm -hmm. like, Mayors, $68,000? Mm -hmm. Is that right? Okay, we got to come back and maybe talk about where some of these numbers came from. This is... Good question. My name is Travis Kaufman. Thanks so much for joining us. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back talking about the Hay Study right after these. Burn up the bandwidth. Guam's hottest talk comes to your smartphone with News Talk K57's streaming, streaming apps. apps. The latest in news, weather, and talk in the palm of your hand. Plus, exclusive features let you talk back to us via email. Visit our webpage and see breaking news on PNC's Twitter page. Smartphone users can now download the free app, which will stream all day, every day, and anywhere. Look in your platform's app store for K57 and download it today. Power 98 is streaming online. Log on to power98.com for a live stream of Guam's official party station, or you can catch us in your Android or Apple devices absolutely free in your App Store or Android Marketplace. Power 98. Download this. Thanks again for joining us tonight on Good Question. My name is Travis Kopp, and I'm your host, usually on the radio on News Talk K57. But not everybody listens to the radio. But you might if you knew that uh, we got good information like we're going to get you tonight. Shane Nacha is with us. He's from the Department of Administration. We're talking about the Hay Study. Now, when we went to the break, people are talking, have been talking about the disparity between some of the really big salaries and some of the not as big uh, salary adjustments. Uh, centers would receive under the recommendations of the current version of the recommended increases, $20,000 a year increase from 65000 mm -hmm. to 85000 uh, Mike Lentiaco, right out of the box, said, where did those numbers come from? So I'm going to ask you, where did those numbers come from? Um, we, we basically, as uh, senators right now, their salaries are linked to those of judges and justices, uh, and that's just via the law. What we did is um, we took a look at uh, 
lawmaker pay, basically. And uh, yes, you'll find in a lot of different districts that uh, pay is low. And, and of course, there are certain political ramifications to salaries for senators. And um, we take a look at that. And we also took a look at other benefits they may receive, not just with salaries, um, which will differ greatly from, from Guam. Uh, and looking into all of that and seeing the lag of pay that's occurred, um, we recommended 85 to, to kind of round out the total rewards. Oh, the total package, package. And, and I was looking at some of the details of the original Hayes study, and it didn't just include pay, it included things like health care, it included things like days off, it mm -hmm. included vacation days. So maybe lawmakers in other jurisdictions get sweeter uh, packages. Correct. Um, I mean, it's, it's anything from lawmakers receiving personal security. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, that costs a salary, costs a state of salary, which could easily exceed the total cost of what that lawmaker would um, uh, have with uh, taxpayers. So. Uh, looking at that and trying not to expand uh, those kinds of benefits you want to include it in the straight salary that they would receive. So it is a recommendation of ours that we put forth and um, uh, you know, left it to decision makers to figure out whether or not um, they want to go ahead with it. And if members of the legislature wanted to change it, they could? Yes, they, they could. Yeah. They, um, if they do it before February the 14th? They could. Um, and, and you know, we're, we're pretty comfortable with the, with the number. I know Senator Limtiaco did uh, present some uh, salary comparisons, yeah. and we acknowledge that those are those are correct. Uh, we don't dispute that. But again, looking at all factors considered, we wanted to come up with something that uh, that might have remained meaningful, and not just linking it to the salary of judges. Uh, we wanted to look at lawmakers in and of themselves and what they provide for the island, because uh, you know they are supposed to be omnipotent of all the problems that the islands have, and try to figure out ways to uh, to solve them. Uh, looking at that, it's a big job. You know? Right. What about mayors? Mayors. Um, Mayors are uh, actually a unique uh, position because they, they were previously only getting paid 46000 and mm. people, and that's why you see uh, the 60% increase. 46000 for a mayor uh, individually for what they do for the villages, um, different than what you would see in the, in the nation, right, uh, whole cities. But their job as a whole to uh, take care of the villages, we also tried to size that up and, and look at what a meaningful salary would be for a mayor and an appropriate one. It does seem uh, larger first when you compare the initial salary, but again, that salary hasn't moved since 91 either. And since 1991, more than 20 years. Right. So, and you know, the, the idea that the mayor of Dededo uh, would be making the same as the mayor of Talafofo. Seems like Dededo is a lot bigger job. Correct. Uh, did, did the Hay study weigh that kind of thing? Um, it does, it looks at it uh, with, with our uh, culture here and how we work with the uh, senator paying legislative pay, you know, we wanted to draw uh, an even basis and make it uniform for the senators. Um, if if the senators would like us to look further into it, um, then you know we could. But we wanted to base have a base that the senators could work off. Okay. And the mayors and uh, vice mayors. You were on the uh, breakfast show recently with Ray Gibson, and I thought he asked a really good question about uh, changes to uh, the the merit system. Mm -hmm. uh, as far as recommendations on how people actually get bonuses mm -hmm. and step increases, are those both recommended to be changed? Uh, yes, what we actually recommended in the study was to uh, suspend the merit bonus program for now and, and look at the performance evaluation system and see if it needs an overhaul mm -hmm. and create a, a separate tier to receive that bonus because uh, with salaries going up, of course, there's a cost implication to those bonuses, and we want to make sure that uh, all departments and agencies are held to a consistent standard. Now, this is actually something kind of interesting, uh, having to do with uh, some uh, pay categories that uh, where the employees have reached the top of the pay grade. Mm -hmm. You know, in the old system, in the, actually in the current system, uh, once you hit that top of the pay grade, you can never ever get a raise again. It's the end of the line. You're set, like in the Department of Education. Mm -hmm. Have you guys changed that? Uh, yeah, what actually happened was in 2010, uh, that's what we recommended. Uh, when someone hits the top of a pay range, uh, basically, uh, according to markets, um, that's where they should stop. Uh, the governor did ask us to address that this time around due to the feedback that we received from agencies like DOE. Mm -hmm. uh, so this time around, um, we have it as a meaningful range of what they should get paid. If they do reach the max, uh, we'll work with policy to continue it. Oh, okay. So uh, the, the situation is, I think that makes sense, in that if you have reached the top of your pay grade and your job, I mean, what's the incentive to work harder? Mm -hmm. Now, did the, it, does this new, uh, these recommendations 
does it currently suspend the uh, merit increases? Uh, what it's going to do is uh, there is a law guiding it, uh, and, and the governor did want to make sure that we overhaul the system to make sure it's done properly. So right now it's going to be suspended as far as the processing of the merit bonuses just so we can take a look at it. Um, which was similar to what happened in 91 as well. They did try to suspend it. Unfortunately, um, I guess as time progressed, uh, an actual system wasn't put together for it, but we're working on something now. Okay, we're here with Shane Nata, and he's from the Department of Administration, talking to us about the Hay study. And I want to go over this again, because this is a question. Hey, when do I get a raise? If lawmakers do nothing, Valentine's Day. Correct. If it's recommended that you get a raise. Uh, if they do something, it could actually be sooner. Correct. Okay. Now, how would they do something? Like, do they have to pass a resolution, a law, what? Um, my understanding of the law didn't uh, exactly, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they'd have to go into session and decide uh, that we're okay with this plan uh, and vote on it to move it forward. And so um, I know Vice, uh, Vice Speaker was on the radio this morning uh, kind of alluding to that. So, um, yes, I imagine they'd have to meet up and vote on it. Oh, okay. So, I mean, who knows? Uh, this is one of those things where I think there are a lot of different considerations. People have had a lot of uh, uh, thoughts on the subject. Now, in the initial plan, uh, were there a whole host of complaints uh, before it was implemented? Um, there, were, there were a lot of complaints. A lot of complaints are linked to more so how much people are getting uh, in the increases. And uh, what DOA tried to do as an education program to kind of uh, talk to employees. Uh, yes, we could definitely recommend raises for every employee, uh, huge raises uh, if we needed to. Um, it's just whether or not it'd be sustainable going forward. So that was one of the tasks put forward to us. Give us a plan that we can sustain going forward and we won't get ourselves into a hole. But, uh, and that, that was the main uh, crux of the problem oh, I back see. in 2010. And, and this is something that uh, we can actually pay for. Right, and so what we're looking at now is uh, slight increases in areas where um, they need to be adjusted. In your opinion, and you've spent a lot of time with this, probably uh, more than most, what's the best part of this? The best part of this plan, I think, is uh, these starting salaries. Uh, it'll go long ways to helping the government recruit uh, better employees. Uh, and just to give an example, um, back in 2010 when we did implement, it was in place for, let's say, three or so, some odd months. Um, already our office was getting inquiries from the state side, from residents that have moved off island and were interested in coming back, uh, those who had just graduated from college. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I think it'll benefit the government in that it'll help attract that kind of talent that we would need to move forward. Uh, and that's what I see uh, as the best part. Okay, and what do you see is the one thing people don't seem to understand about it, or maybe a misconception about the A study? A lot of the misconception is that, um, you know, I don't, get anything and, and we understand that uh, salaries are linked to thoughts of self-worth and uh, right. to the organization and we, and we fully understand that and we emphasize with it uh, you know if the financial situation allowed us to make it a bigger better plan of course it would uh, mm -hmm. but we had to stay within the means that we had. Shane Nata is with us tonight we're talking about uh, the Hayes study uh, some of the best parts uh, and maybe some of the most misunderstood parts about the uh, Hay study implementation and uh, what it is that is moving forward and, and where you can get that information. Um, who gets the biggest raise? Who would get the biggest raise? Ooh, depends. Are you talking classified or unclassified? Uh, I'm talking <laughs> sheer cash. <laughs> sheer is it going to be like attorneys, uh, doctors? Uh, who, who gets the biggest raise? You know, offhand, the biggest raises um, would be those employees who haven't been in the government uh, that long, mm -hmm. only because they started with salaries uh, in, from 91. Oh, I see. Right. I see. And so maybe categorically they wouldn't be there. Right. Like dollar-wise, though. Uh, dollar-wise, um, we can actually go through that list, and that, that'd be where you see the biggest increases. Okay. And, yeah. and the list is out there. It, it will be uh, bandied about, and uh, you can look. And even if it's not you that gets a big, chunky raise this time around, the way that raises are handed out and the steps are different, and uh, they are larger. And so down the road, you do a good job. You stay with the government. Ultimately, the idea is that you're rewarded for it. We've got uh, Shane Notzer with us from the Department of Administration. We'll be back here on Good Question to wrap things up right after these. I like that. Yeah, I like that. You gotta like that. What's not to like? Like, like, like. <laughs> I like that. Ooh, I like. Oh, I definitely like that. 
Mm, that too, I like that one. I like it. Like, that's weird. I like this, yeah. There's a whole lot of liking going on. That's right, we're too cool not to like. Like us on Facebook today. What do you like? I like it. <laughs> I liked that yesterday. Thanks once again for joining us tonight on Good Question. My name is Travis Kopp. I'm the host of News Talk K57's The Big Show from 2 to 6 every afternoon on Guam's own Fox 6 and on 570 AM and online. And uh, you can catch Ray Gibson there as well. Patty Arroyo, we're all on the radio. But not all of you listen to the radio. You might think about that. In the meantime, we should keep you informed. We'll do that. Shane Nauta is with us tonight. And uh, he's from the Department of Administration. We're talking about uh, the Hayes study. Uh, who's in? Who's out? Uh, nurses, in or out? In. In. Uh, let's see. Teachers are in. Uh, what about police officers? Uh, law enforcement actually weren't included in this uh, this year's recommendation. No. Yeah. How come? Uh, well, they were adjusted up to their mandated 40% increase. Uh, so when we assess their salaries and what their structure looks like, uh, they're from our analysis on par with market. Uh, so it didn't look like it needed a, a separate adjustment. Uh, you know, we had already complied with what the law mandated for them uh, and was paid retroactively to when it should have been um, uh, implemented. I know they received one installment of mm -hmm. that retroactive payment um, and the other to come within the fiscal year. Well, you know what? This raises uh, an important point that uh, if people are going to ask about and probably be confused about. They're, they'll say, hey, these were supposed to be implemented in 2010. Uh, once we get a raise, will it be retroactive? That's a question that at, at this point in time, the law says it's effective February 14th. Uh, I believe that probably be an answer that come from either the administration or the legislature. But as of right now, we're complying with the law, so it'll be February 14th. Okay. Yeah. So right now, the law says it would start February 14th. Correct. And nothing would have been incurred as in debt before that. That's my so, understanding. So no retro. Yeah, that's my understanding right now. Of, of the law right now. So unless things change, mm -hmm. no. Okay. Got it. Okay. Um, anything else that we need to ask about the Hay study? When do I get my raise? Well, again, if the legislature does nothing, mm -hmm. uh, then it would be February 14th. Um, if they decide to make some changes, it could be sooner than that. Is, do you think that these uh, recommendations are a certainty? Do you believe that there are, no matter what, going to be implemented? Um, I believe that they're, they're solid recommendations, um, you know, and I, I haven't heard too much, uh, I guess, from the legislature on whether or not um, I have heard that they may have some questions about it. But, you know, I, I believe they're, they're um, appropriate and, and they can go into concern. But, you know, we do have to let the legislature take that process and, and, and vet it out for whatever concerns they may have. So if this is implemented the way that it's recommended right now, is the government of Guam overpaying are they right where they need to be uh, are we competitive uh, we're competitive we're we won't be overpaying uh, we'll be closer to what market would pay but uh, in our analysis we found that trying to get us up to where market needs to be would cost a substantial amount of money but we're a lot closer than where we used to be as far as as a whole we're a lot closer than we used to be all right if we'd like to find out more information uh, where should we go um, you can call our office. Um, we'll have more details once it's decided when, when it's actually going to go into play. So at that point, we'll be able to give uh, detailed information. Well, Shane, place. thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. You're a really knowledgeable guy. They were right. <laughs> and they, they, they threw you under the bus. They were like, Shane, <laughs> yeah, you go handle this. And, uh, well, you can tell we didn't know a whole lot about the Hayes study, so we figured uh, spending a half an hour on it on a good question would probably be a worthwhile endeavor. We really appreciate you coming by. Thanks so much. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. My name is Travis Kaufman. This is Good Question. I've been your host tonight right here and, well, on television. I was going to say ABC7 or Fox 6, but it could be either one, depending on what night you're watching. We're glad to have you. We'll talk to you next time.